Hello and welcome back to a very, very exciting reading vlog. This week, Vampathon is happening, and if you don't know what Vampathon is, it is a readathon hosted by Jody and a few other people. I will link all of their channels on the screen and all of them down below. It has taken place, I think this is the third year that's been happening and it happens around Halloween. It typically goes on for a week. There's a bunch of like spooky-esque prompts and it's just a fun little readathon. Now, I have never done Vampathon. I found out about Vampathon through my bestie Katie and I'm so excited to partake this year. I love a good readathon and I used to do way more readathons back on my old channel like G's Magical Readathon. I did like Medievalathon. I I was involved in the readathon communities, let me tell you what. But I just, I haven't done one in forever. And I'm so, so excited to do one now. And I have quite the ambitious TBR. It's a fat stack, okay? It's, it's very, very ambitious. So how Vampathon works is there's kind of like I'll just pop it up on the screen. There's like this grid and you can kind of get a bingo if you want. You can just use some of the random prompts if you'd like. But I'm going for a bingo on the bottom row and then I have a few other books that fit into a couple of their places in case that I do complete the bottom row. So let's talk our way through my TBR. Starting with the bottom left, which is a book that has blood on the cover, I want to pick up Five Survive by Holly Jackson. I really wanted to read like a thriller murder mystery type of book this spooky season, but I'm kind of a wuss and I thought a standalone would be a fun time. I wanted to pick something up by Holly Jackson because I was going to read the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, but then that never happened and I spoiled the entire series for myself. And so I thought, let's pick up the standalone by Holly Jackson and hopefully it's a fun time. I don't know exactly what this follows. Apparently they're on a road trip with five friends and their RV breaks down in the middle of nowhere and it wasn't an accident. Clearly someone wants them dead. With eight hours till dawn, the six friends must escape or figure out which among them is a target. But is there a liar among them? Buried secrets will be forced to light and tensions inside the RV will reach deadly levels. Not all of them will survive the night. So there's six friends, but only five survive. I think it'll be fun. This isn't a genre I typically reach for, but since it's YA, I think, I think I'll be able to handle it and not have nightmares for like a month or something. I don't know. <laughs> the next prompt is read a book in the dark and I don't have anything in particular for that one. I will just see what I'm reading and read something in the dark. So nothing specific for that category. As for a prompt with witchy vibes, I have The Kiss Curse by Erin Sterling. This is the second book in like the X-Hex duology situation. And obviously witchy vibes because our characters are wizards or witches or I, I don't exactly know. This is the second book. And then for a book set in an academy like school setting, I have the X-Hex. I have heard and I'm trusting Katie. She said that part of this book takes place in a school because our main character is a professor or a teacher or something. I almost had a moment where I put the Wiseman's fear on this TBR and then I was like, no, what, what, what was I, what was I thinking? And I wasn't, okay? If y'all don't know the backstory of The Wiseman's Fear, last year I read it and it took me like 10 months to finally like pick up and finish. It was like a running gag all last year and I just need to stay away from that book, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. So that's kind of my bingo goal is the bottom section because the books that I had on my October TBR, that's kind of what fits the most. But then I have three other books that I also want to maybe get my hands on and read, not necessarily get my hands on, I already own them, but have time to pick them up. Very, very ambitious because all of these are extremely long compared to the TBR that I just showed. So for a book that I want to sink my teeth into, I have The Frugal Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England by Brandon Sanderson. This book does not look or feel like a Brandon Sanderson book at all. It's following someone who awakes in medieval England with no memory of who he is or where he came from or why he is there and he is chased by a group from his own time. So he's an accidental time traveler, I suppose, and has to kind of survive. I think it sounds so bloody fun. This is the second book of the secret projects that Brandon Sanderson wrote during quarantine, and I already read Tress of the Emerald Sea, and let me tell you, that book will probably end up on my favorite book of this year. And so I'm just gonna kind of work my way through all the different novels. So we have this one and I do wanna pick up eventually Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. And then the fourth book is releasing very soon as well. It just sounds so fun, so goofy. And I think it'll be just a very fun read. Maybe I'll read it after Five Survive when I'm like 
high key stressing about murder mystery things. Then we have a book with a gothic cover and for that I have Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Maniscalco. Now I have been obsessed with Stalking Jack the Ripper specifically because of the romance between Audrey Rose and Thomas. Literally it's so cute. The banter, the flirting, oh my goodness. I absolutely loved the first book and this series is actually on my 2023 TBR. So I would love to complete the series before the end of the year because I'm not doing too hot when it comes to my 2023 TBR, let me tell you what. And I just think it's gonna be a fun, grand old time. It is kind of a long one in terms of like, pages well obviously in terms of pages where is a page number on this thing i'm so incredibly excited to dive back into this story and this series it's so jarring though like this is a paperback from the library and it just seems wrong like paperbacks from libraries just seem wrong i just it's weird i don't know and then lastly on my very very ambitious tbr we have a book that uses blood as magic. And for that, I have A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. If you've watched my last couple of vlogs, you know that I have been absolutely devouring A Darker Shade of Magic trilogy. And this is the final book in that series. And I have such high expectations. I five-starred the first two. So I'm hoping that I will five-star this last one. This is quite a chunky book. It's like 600 pages. So I'm not like holding out too much hope that I'll be able to get to this book, but I would love to be able to at least start it because I am just having such a fun time in this series. And the second book ended on a massive ending that made me very grateful that one, I already had my hands on the third book and two, I didn't read this as it was coming out because Ooh, what a cliffhanger. This is my sister's copy, so I'm excited that I have have it readily available for me. But I will probably end up buying the series in hardcover for myself because I love it so much. So that, my friends, is my very, very ambitious TBR. There are so, so many books on this list. Truly, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to get to them all, nor do I really know which book I want to start with. I'm thinking The X-Hex by Erin Sterling, one, because I've been wanting to read this all October. I got this at the beginning of October, and then I saw the Vampathon prompts, and I was like, wait, I should wait until Vampathon to pick this up. How thematic that would be, especially near Halloween, witchy vibes, spooky season, we love it. And it's not super duper long, it's just under 300 pages, and it's a fun, like, cute romance, and I think that will get me into the reading mood, and then maybe I'll pick up The Kiss Curse and work my way through this hefty little TBR. So, plans for today. I actually do have some work I need to get done, unfortunately, and I was supposed to get it all done these past two days, but I just didn't have time to complete everything on my to-do list, and therefore I don't have five uninterrupted days of reading, which is quite unfortunate because Vampathon takes place from the 27th, which is today, to the 31st Halloween, and so we have five days to complete six books, We'll see what happens, but today I am going to go to the full cup and that is when I will start reading the X-Hex, but in the meantime I do have a few things I need to get done around the house, but I will see you at the coffee shop and then I'll give you a little update on my reading then. to do just a bit of reading of the X Hex at the full cup and <laughs> I was searching for like which like ambiance I wanted to listen to because typically I do like cafe jazz with rain and 
I just wasn't feeling that. And then sometimes I do like a Legend of Zelda soundtrack type of ambiance. But I listened to a Sonic ambiance, which was really random, but whatever. Anyways, enough about that. I made it to chapter eight of the XX, forgetting a bookmark. So that is page, page 72. Also, the chapters have like little kitties with a little candle and I love that so much. It's so cute. So basically what I'm gathering from the XX, we have Reese and we have Vivi and nine years prior, so kind of like the prologue of the story, Vivi got absolutely dumped by Reese because apparently he was betrothed to someone else and then neglected to tell her that for three months and then they, they parted ways but there is a festival happening and since Reese is part of a certain family, he has to go and kind of replenish the ley lines in this town, which is coincidentally where Vivi is. Now it's been nine years and the way that like these two are still like thinking about each other and like not necessarily like pining over each other per se, they're kind of like, oh, the one that got away type vibe, I'm like, it was three months, nine years ago. We're kind of at a point where Reese is starting to think his life is kind of unlucky. Like shit keeps going down and he doesn't quite understand why everything is happening. And Vivi has reached a point where she's like, hey Gwen, you know how we like fake cursed Reese, you know, like nine years prior. What if we accidentally actually cursed him? Cause like, <laughs> I kind of witnessed some shit happening to Reese, and that's not really normal. So maybe we should uh, figure something out, do something about that. So far it's been really, really fun. I already can kind of see why Katie loves this book so much. It gives me almost the same vibes so far as the Well Met series, and that is like my favorite like comfort romance series. So I get, I get where Katie's coming from, I get the vibes. And I'm excited to kind of see where things progress. I'm assuming this is enemies to lovers, or like a second chance sort of romance. They seem to despise each other right now, but like not, I don't know, Vivi despises Reese a little bit more and Reese is like, wow, I was kind of, kind of a douche back then. So that's kind of where we're at with the story. I do have practice that I'm heading off to and then after that, I'm probably gonna go home and read some more. Hopefully get a little further into it and see some romance developing because right now it's just been like tension with some cute little banter. Like Reese, he's a little charming, not gonna lie. We'll see, we'll see how things go. I'm excited. Anyways, I'm going to be off to practice and then I will see you tonight when I read some more. Hello, I have a bit of a reading update for you all. I managed to finish The X-Hex by Aaron Sterling and I have some very unfortunate news for you all. I didn't really like it at all. Um, I definitely had to like force myself to finish reading this book. I fell asleep while reading this book. <laughs> I never fall asleep while reading. Granted, I was like exhausted this morning after practice, but I was not expecting to like fall asleep while reading. I had a couple problems with this book, which is that first the plot was plotting a little bit too hard, but yet it was still really boring at the same time. And then when like the romance finally did get introduced, I just, I wasn't a fan. I didn't really see the connection. Everything was just being compared to their quick like summer fling like nine years prior. And then the third act conflict that occurred was like one of the dumbest things I've ever read. And the resolution happened so I just, I don't wanna hark on this book too hard, but I just didn't really like it. And I wish I did because I know that like Katie really loves this book and a lot of, a lot of booktube girlies do love this book, but honestly, not a big fan. I really didn't connect to Vivi or Reese in the slightest. And I just really found it boring. The romance, the plot, everything that was going on. I don't know why I didn't connect to anything that was going on in this. So that is my very, very unfortunate update. Honestly, if we're star rating, probably like a low, I can't even say low three. It's like a 2.75 and I feel so bad. <laughs> I don't like giving books like bad ratings, especially books that like I know people like, but it just wasn't for me, which is really unfortunate because I do have a kiss curse on my Vampathon TBR and I'm not, sure if I want to give like Aaron Sterling a second chance with like this series. I think it follows different 
characters. Let me let me just grab the book and see which character it actually follows. Okay, so apparently this follows Gwen and Wells, which was uh, Reese's brother. I think it was his brother. I just finished the book and I already forgot. Whoops. This is kind of giving like well met vibes, but witchy in terms of kind of how the series is going because Well Met is the Renaissance romance series where we follow different characters in every book, but they're characters that we already kind of see, whether that be like main character's best friend or sister or cousin, that sort of thing. And the concept sounds like something I should enjoy. I don't know if it's because I'm not super into like the witchy vibes or whatnot, but I think I will give this book a try because Gwen seems like a very fun character in the X Hacks, so maybe this will be fun. Maybe this will be the book that I actually enjoy because maybe I just didn't like that romance because that kind of happened with Well Met series where there was a couple books that I was like, okay, that was decent, and then there was like the last two books and I was like, oh my gosh, five stars. I freaking cannot get over how good this book was. So. I'm gonna give the Kiss Curves a try, I have decided. However, I'm not picking that up next because I don't want to suffer. I don't think I've mentioned that it's actually day two of Vampathon and literally all I've managed to read is the x Hex, which is like barely 300 pages. So the reading is a little rough right now, but it took a lot of motivation to actually finish the x Hex, and I kind of fell asleep which I said I wouldn't, but then suddenly I was asleep and suddenly many hours had passed. So we'll just pretend like my entire day didn't get written off because of that. I have to go and pick up my sister from the airport tonight. And so I don't really have that much time to read anymore, unfortunately. However, tonight when I come back, because I took a fat nap, I will probably still be awake and still have some energy. And thus I'm going to be picking up Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Minnescalco. I'm so excited to be picking this up. I can't wait to see where the little romance goes between Auntie Rose and Thomas. I don't know if I'm going to finish this entire book in one go or maybe start the book and then pick up another one. I haven't quite decided. Honestly, it just depends. I do have dance practice tomorrow, so that's also gonna take a big chunk out of my time. Honestly, how dare my life events interfere with Vampathon. The audacity of life, truly. But that is my reading plans and that is my reading update as well. And I will see you tomorrow. It is after dance practice. It is much later in the evening because I got home and it was like 45 degrees Fahrenheit here. So the house was nice and cool. I was nice and cool. And I just like cozied up and read so much of Hunting Prince Dracula. So I made it to page 248 and we're kind of in the thick of it. I have some some big old updates to give. Our two lovely, lovely characters, Audrey Rose and Thomas, they are in Romania and they were traveling on the Orient Express and gasp, within like two chapters, there was a murder on the Orient Express, which has never happened in the history of ever. So it was quite, it was quite shocking. It was quite jarring. Also, the amount of murder that these characters are around is kind of concerning, to be honest, especially after stalking Jack the Ripper. Like, I feel like being involved in back-to-back -back murder cases like this in a different country is just so off-putting and definitely not normal. So Audrey Rose is kind of struggling with coming to terms with everything that kind of went down like three weeks before this with the ending of Stalking Jack the Ripper. Kind of some traumatizing shit, like not gonna lie. She kind of went through it and she has not given herself some time to come to terms with everything going on. It's kind of affecting her studies 
and she's poor thing she's struggling a little bit but she doesn't want anyone to think that she's struggling because she is heading to this freaking gothic castle to study and it's obviously full of men and she wants to be respected among her peers and she doesn't want people thinking that she is delicate or fragile in any way just because she is a female because she already has to fight for the respect of her peers because she wears skirts and that's a big big theme in this book and not just being you know cast aside because of her gender and honestly good for her go audrey rose she's such a badass and she's handling her shit and i love her however thomas and audrey rose got in a little bit of a tizzy and usually you know with like romance books we get like the third act conflict and i hate it every time but this time the conflict that kind of happened was absolutely warranted and audrey rose had every right to stand up and say what she said to thomas even though I do understand what Thomas was trying to do, which is just like protect Audrey Rose, but she is a badass on her own. She can handle her shit. Luckily, we're working through that because I don't like when they're not flirting. The book, the book's not necessarily boring when they're not flirting, but like, I'm definitely here for the romance, not the plot. I just, every time there's a scene where they're like dissecting bodies and like cutting them open, I'm like, Ugh, can we move on please? <laughs> Can we go back to flirting in the corridor, please? We also have been introduced to quite a few characters that are female, which is so exciting because like I said, Audrey Rose is typically in male dominated areas because of her fields of study. And there's Adriana, there's Alina and something with the D. <laughs> Uh, it's like Decinia or something. Where this? I swear she was involved in so much of this book early on, and now I can't even find Decinia. Decina. And one of those three is acting awfully suspicious. I'm just gonna put it vaguely like that. So I have some theories because things keep happening, and a character keeps being involved in some things that. I'm kind of like, why are you here? Why are you acting shifty? Why do you know the things that you know? Thomas and Audrey Rose ended up finding a dead body and they were attacked by vampire bats. And that entire scene literally had my skin crawling, but like a swarm of anything, terrifying. Like low key, I personally, getting a little vulnerable over here, but like the, like the big groups of birds that like fly around, scare me so badly for two reasons one because have you ever seen the crudes that's scary and two the fifth wave as well okay i have like a mild fear of swarms of birds anyway so a swarm of bats <laughs> no count me out and they're like underground absolutely not absolutely not that body that they kind of stumbled across we think it might be tied to some other murders that have been going on there's murders basically where it looks like people have been like killing vampires in terms of like steak through the heart garlic in the mouth kind of a violent way to die not gonna lie and then there has also been a body that was drained of blood people think that like dracula is back hence like stalking prince dracula there's a lot there's a lot going on i don't think it's actually supernatural i think we're pretty based in science in this book so i'm intrigued to see who is going to be responsible for all of this like i said i have my theories which will probably be proven wrong because i'm not built for like deductive books like this that lay clues because i miss them and then i end up pointing at a non-guilty person so hopefully that is not the case but that is my little update for now i am on a call with katie right now and we're gonna do a little bit more reading or at least i am i don't know what she's doing but i did i did cave and order something and i would like grab the box to open it but my mom accidentally opened it for me which is totally fine because it was just like one book it's not that big of a deal but 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 that is a Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. I originally was going to be holding off on buying this book and reading this book. I was like, I'll get to it by like maybe the end of November or something. I put it on my November TBR. I was like, okay, I'll get to it. But then I was watching a video by Carrie Cannot Read. Or can read? Carrie can read? She can either read or she can't. I don't remember which one it is. But she basically recapped, she was doing a reading vlog and she was recapping like the first two books, which was so helpful and that was exactly what I needed because that meant I didn't need to reread the books. But then it made me so excited to pick up this book and figure out what goes down in it. And so I bought it. Whoops. <laughs> I'm not like over the moon, overjoyed, like can't, I gotta put everything aside and pick up this book type beat, but I am eager to pick it up after Vampathon and kind of see what I think of it. See how the conclusion ends up because if y'all know, I love the ending of book two. 
like kind of bold of me to say because it ends on like an absolute like wild ending love it so i'm kind of excited to see what they do with book three plus i am low-key worried about getting spoiled because so many people are picking this up so it's kind of inevitable that i might accidentally get spoiled so don't want that to happen also there's an a bit of a change in terms of like my tbr for vampathon so let's talk about that real quick okay so originally with my this is my little vampathon spread i don't think i ever showed this isn't that cute isn't she cute love her there's been a, there's been a bit of a bit of a scramble due to some recent insight from katie which is if i didn't like the x hex which i did not we all discussed this then i should not pick up the kiss curse because i probably won't like it either so i'm just gonna drop the kiss curse from my tbr so we're gonna switch witchy vibes from the kiss curse to the x hex and then we're gonna put set in a school and we're gonna switch that to hunting prince dracula because i didn't realize that they were at an academy for most of this and so then we have two on the bottom that we're working towards. We are three days into Vampathon and I have only completed one book and I'm halfway through another. So things aren't going too hot in terms of this Vampathon. However, my plan for the next two days is to finish my TBR, like finish the bingo, and then hopefully read another book. I wanna read five books. That, that was my goal, right? The five books. Now that I've dropped The Kiss Curse, then maybe four books. Four books? No, I still have five. Now I'm confused. How many books did I have on my TBR? But I'm hoping to finish Hunting Prince Dracula tonight. Kind of ambitious. I know it is already like nine o'clock. So we'll see if that happens. I think I can if I really like set my mind to it. I, I think I can finish Hunting Prince Dracula. We'll be doing a lot more reading these next two days. So buckle up and get ready. I also will be going to the farmer's market. I don't know if I'm going on Monday or on Tuesday. I think probably tomorrow. That way I can do like my pumpkin carving situation tomorrow and then on Tuesday, like it's Halloween. So I can have them up and ready for Halloween. That is my plans for now. But if y'all don't mind, I think I'll have Katie say hello. Let's see if she minds. Would you like to say hello to the vlog? Do I have a choice? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> she said no, y'all. <laughs> I literally was like, let's see if Katie minds saying hello. And you're like, do I have a choice? <laughs> As always, Katie's here to support my channel. Love it. Anyways, I'm gonna go back to reading and I'll update y'all later. Good morning. So Texas decided to just skip fall and jump straight into winter. It was like 30 degrees Fahrenheit this morning. I'm like, where's like the 70 degrees? Where's the nice crisp autumn morning? What is this winter weather? But I get to wear a sweater, so I'm very excited. And I'm very excited because I have an update for you. I managed to actually finish reading Hunting Prince Dracula last night. Didn't think I could do it, but Katie kept me company and I plowed through this. I am such, her words, a pansy, <laughs> because this book creeped me the fuck out. I'm not gonna lie to you because I could deal with like the fun gothic castle, sneaking around corridors, but then you put our characters underground in tunnels with like death traps, spiders, uh, creepy bone trees. I was not okay, I'm not gonna lie. I was really creeped out in the end. But if you like that sort of spooky, creepy atmosphere, it was fun. I will say I wish this page, this pages? I will say I wish this book was like 50 pages shorter. I did get a little bit bored near the end, especially. The first half was really fun, especially because Obviously we had Artie Rose and Thomas, you know, with their flirting, which I also love. And we kind of get to see them getting into the castle and going to their classes. But then it got kind of redundant with like them going to a classes and then trying to figure out like murders and then more murders happening, which is basically what happened in the first book. But for some reason, the first book kept me a little bit more intrigued the entire way through versus this one, I was just, a little bit bored by the end. I wish it wrapped up a little bit quicker. I feel like it was just drawn out like a little bit too long, especially with the lack of clues that we were given. Maybe if we were given more clues or maybe I just like missed them all, I would have been more intrigued, but I feel like the character, like there was no like particular character where I was like, that's gotta be them. It's definitely them until the end when obviously it was revealed 
not who I was expecting. And I was expecting a plot twist because Carrie Maniscalco seems to do that really, really well with misleading. Look, it might be this person over here and then wha-bam, psych, it's this person that you didn't expect at all. That was fun. I really liked who was the murderer the entire time. I did give it a 3.75 mostly because I feel like it just dragged on a little bit too much. But I will say, I do love me a good historical romance because tell me why, tell me why I was kicking my feet so hard when our characters kissed. Giggling, giggling like a freaking seven-year-old. Let me tell you what, <laughs> just, they're so cute. And all it was was them, you know, kissing. I'm like, oh no, but your propriety, Audrey Rose. I just... I loved it so much. This girl got so excited over a pair of trousers and I thought that was adorable. Truly, I don't know, this romance is so cute. So I will be continuing the series. This just wasn't my favorite of the series. But next we are going to America in Escaping from Houdini, which is uber exciting. I'm really curious to see what events will transpire in America and kind of what goes down there. So that is my little reading update for Hunting Prince Dracula. I did break Katie's heart a little bit when I told her that I didn't like the XX. And then I told her that I wasn't like the biggest fan of Hunting Prince Dracula. She goes, I feel like this vampathon is just you reading all my favorite books and hating them. And I'm trying not to, but I am going to be picking up Five Survive by Holly Jackson next. I plan on being out all day. I think I'm gonna go to the farmer's market today, pick up a pumpkin, and then I'm gonna go to the full cup obviously, and the library probably, because I have some library books I need to pick up. I cannot read this at night because when I was reading this at night, I was a little bit creeped out, a little, little bit creeped out. Like I would not have kept reading that book if I was not on a FaceTime call with Katie, I'm not gonna lie. Cause like she said, I'm a pansy. Um, but if I survive, it's definitely, I feel like gonna be even higher stakes than Hunting Prince Dracula. So I cannot be reading that at night. I need to read it out in public, in broad daylight, for I will not be scared. So that is the plan for today. And I, yeah, I'm really excited. I also have some work that I need to get done. So I might do a little bit of art that I need to be doing. But other than that, I think it's just gonna be a really fun and cozy day of reading. Like I said, it's cold outside. So I'm so excited to get myself a hot chocolate at the full cup and just cozy up with a book. Not necessarily the coziest of books, but I think it'll be fun regardless. I have a bit of a reading update for you all. I managed to sit in the full cup and finish the entirety of Five Survive in one sitting. And let me tell you, I am not, I am not built for thrillers. <laughs> I, I was panicking by like page 50, okay? Like when the thing, when the, <laughs> when the plot started plotting, bro, <laughs> I was done. I was like, Okay, <laughs> I need to know what's going on right now. Like, I am literally the type of person who, if a movie is on that has some sort of mystery, I will literally read the entire Wikipedia summary to figure out who done it before I even watch the movie. Because I'm, I just, I can't, I can't take that intense amount of like not knowing. I just, I don't like scary things, and I've accepted this about myself. But I thought I'd try my first thriller. I think this is my first thriller. I could be wrong, but. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so our plot we have these six high schoolers basically road tripping it all the way to Florida, and they're in an RV. Suddenly, they lose all cell service, so they can't get to anybody at all, and their RV breaks down. They're like, okay, no piggy, okay? RV broke down, just a flat tire. So they start arguing and then, you know, someone's like, yo, there's a spare. 
So they change it, they all get back inside the RV, and then suddenly all four tires get blown out as well as the gas tank. So basically, <laughs> they're stranded in the middle of nowhere, no cell service, six of them, they don't know what's going on. And there's a sniper threatening to shoot anyone that, that leaves the RV. Oh, the, the not knowing, I would just like, I, I, I could not handle that. I could not handle it. Especially like the red dot being like your only indication that like death is at your doorstep. It, they start going Lord of the Flies in here, okay? So we have Simon who's drunk during like the first chunk of this book. The entire book takes place in like eight hours. We have Red who's our main character who has a lot of trauma and I think ADHD with how her narration was. We had Oliver and his girlfriend, Release Rev something. That's how unforgettable her character was. Raina. And then we had Maddie who was Red's best friend. Oh, and off. Ar Arthur, I think that's his name, is kind of a love interest for Red, but that's not like super relevant to the story. But Red's narration made this book so fun, honestly. I can see why a lot of people did have complaints with how sporadic and quick this book was, but I think that's what made it so fun for me, especially because I was so stressed and I just wanted the book to be over, so I read it so quickly. Red, she has a lot going on and her brain is always bouncing between things, picking up on like small things, kind of being a pushover, which was unfortunate, but honestly it kind of fits her personality and everything that kind of went on. I had a few theories, which one of them, I was actually really proud that I actually figured out that was correct, but the plot twist at the end, th I there's no way I could have deduced that at all. Things did happen though that made me pretty happy at the end, but not in the way that I was expecting things to play out. Super fun. When I read, I'm very like visceral with my reactions, like gasping, covering my mouth, freaking out. So if anyone was witnessing me reading this book in the coffee shop, they're like, that girl is going through it. Like something is going down in that book. Basically super fast paced thriller. It didn't really give you a lot of times to connect to the characters. I will say they developed some of the characters a bit further than I thought they would. And I really like how the switch happened to bring out almost like the true personality of some people when they're like in situations like this where it's like do or die. And some people start going all Lord of the Flies. There was some intense moments within the friend group and I really thought like things were gonna go down in the RV because it got very heated. They tried multiple escape plans, which were pretty clever. I couldn't have, I wouldn't have, I don't know what I've, I've I would have been dead, okay? Oh, but basically to like circle back to the plot, the whole reason why they're like stuck in the middle of nowhere and they have a walkie talkie to communicate with the killer. There's a secret that one of the six people need to reveal. And that's what they're kind of after. Wild ride, let me tell you. I, I mean, I give it four stars. I don't know if I mentioned that, like a low four stars. I have no other thrillers to really compare it to. So don't trust me like too much on that sort of rating. I didn't really have any main like issues, like pressing issues with it. That is done and done for I Survive, Blood on the Cover. So all I need to do now is read a book in the dark, which I've been doing because I mostly read at night. However, it's only four o'clock and I really don't wanna go home right now. The library doesn't close until eight. So I'm actually going to go get some lunch and then eat it probably in my car. Just like vibing alone. Cause the weather, oh, the weather is so nice that I'm literally sitting here without my car running and not drenched in sweat. Isn't that so exciting? And then I'm going to the library. I have some books I'm picking up and then I will probably work on my map a little bit. I've had no motivation to work on art lately, which is really bad because I have some commissions I really do need to work on. That is kind of the plan. If I feel like reading, I might find like one of my books that I'm reading at the library just to like start it and then pick it up when I get back home. But I will be reading tonight a little bit more as well once I actually go home, but I'm a little peckish. So I'm going to solve that problem and I will talk to you later.
so fun. It killed all three of my Sharpies that I used, but I think it looks really cool. It's pumpkin-tography instead of cartography. I don't know, it was really fun to just like doodle without care on a pumpkin. I love it, oh my gosh. But I, it is the last day of Vampathon and it is finally night because my last prompt that I need to complete is read a book at night. And I have this <laughs> that I was supposed to be reading and I was gonna start it earlier in the day and then finish it off at night because it's like, 600 pages. Um, I'm not gonna be able to finish this, but I think I'm still gonna count it. Like, if it takes me an extra day to finish this book, so be it. I didn't wanna like hold myself too aggressively to like fully completing Vampathon. So if I start this book and get like 100 or so pages in, I'm gonna count it because I'm reading it at night. I know that's not technically the rules, but That'll count as my bingo and I'll hopefully finish this book tomorrow, but I am going to actually sit down and start it. It is seven o'clock, the sun has finally set so I can actually read this in the dark. I do most of my reading at night anyways, so kind of checks out. Unless I somehow, I don't know, stay up until like 2 a.m. reading this. I don't, I don't think it's happening, but honestly, never say never in the wise words of JB, you know? But <laughs> that's... That's the plan, we'll see if I execute said plan, but I'm gonna get to reading and I will give y'all some updates. Hello, I have made a little bit more progress in A Conjuring of Light and I have decided that I am going to finish this tonight because I just, one, I need to finish this vlog and two, I need to finish this book. So it's happening tonight. Tonight is the night. It is only 5.30, so, you know, it's still light outside. I have my little lamp on over here. I'm cozied up with my little sweater. Loving the vibes. However, I'm not really loving the vibes of the book right now. So I am on page 330 of 630-ish. So I'm basically at the halfway point. And I hate to say this, but I'm kind of bored, which is slightly worrying because I have loved the series so hard. And the fact that I'm like really bored right now is not boding well. Because my problem right now with like everything that's happening, it's, it's, it's a lot of like trying and failing and trying and failing and trying and failing. I can't really explain it without spoiling, which obviously I don't want to do. But right now our main characters are traveling somewhere. So they're back on a boat, which I'm like, yes. Hopefully this will turn things around and I'll start enjoying it a little bit more since they're back on the ship. I like what they're doing with the story. Like, don't get me wrong. I love what's happening to the city. And I really think the setup is really cool. Like the magic and the villain and everything going on. However, right now this book is not feeling like it needed to be as long as it is. I'm just not really enjoying the pacing. I think that's the problem. I'm still loving the characters, but everything's just dragging a little bit too much for me to fully be invested and sucked in this story because I'm just waiting for things to get moving because I feel like we're like really dragging things out which is a bit unfortunate but I really just want to finish this book so I'm gonna sit here and read until I finish it. I have reached the point where I have under 100 pages left and I will say the entire like massive segment that I had just read from like page 300 onward was so much better then the first like 300, 250 pages of this book. The pacing was so much better. The action that was going on had, was just so much more interesting than what was happening in like the first half of this book. And I still stand by the fact that I think that should have been cut up and shortened a little bit. But we also kept getting backstories of characters and getting to know more about side characters. But I feel like we're too late into the series to really even bother diving into that. And then again, the whole purpose that V.E. Schwab had for like getting you attached to these characters was just to cause them pain. So nothing new from her though, I will say. I, I feel like some of these backstories could have been sprinkled in throughout earlier books, but at the same time, I don't think I would have cared as much as I do now. It just is making the book very, very long. We're reaching a point where a lot of people have died and now they're threatening some of my faves and I'm not about that. And I'm a little scared because I don't know what direction the Schwab is gonna go in. She seems to be rather ruthless, 
as of late. A lot of the characters that she's killed off so far, I just didn't really have that deep of an attachment to. And that's a little unfortunate because I do love character deaths where they're really meaningful and you really feel for them because you cared so much about them. And the author was like, <laughs> I'm gonna rip them away from you. I, I do, well, I don't wanna say enjoy that, but I, I find that writing well done. I don't like character deaths for no purpose. It has to progress the plot or progress another character's like motivation for something. I feel like I hate when authors just like kill a character off for like the surprise aspect of like, oh, I killed a character off and there's really no purpose. I'm looking at you, Cassandra Clare. But like I said, I'm on page 542 out of 624. I'm, I'm on a chapter that I'm really, really scared about. And I'm not gonna say whose POV it is, but I'm really scared because they've really grown on me and I really don't want them to die. I know I'm gonna fly through these last like 100 or so pages, but I just wanna let you know that I'm stressed and I'm scared, but the pacing has been so much better and I'm back to actually like enjoying this book and really wanting to finish it versus like trudging through it. I finished A Conjuring of Light and it's like a 4.25. I really loved how everything wrapped up. The action at the end was phenomenal. I literally like turned the page and it was like the start of the massive battle, like the battle to end all battles. And I was like, this is gonna be intense and it's gonna be so good. And I was proven correctly, luckily. The ending chapters, every single one of them got me so good. And I can now safely say that Delilah Bard is one of my all-time favorite characters because what an absolute knife-wielding badass. I love her to bits, honestly. Now, I will say, the only reason why this isn't a five-star is because of the pacing at the beginning. I feel like we set up quite a bit in the beginning of this book and then had to resolve all of that at the end of the book while also resolving everything else set up in the past two books. So perhaps if this was four books instead of three, the pacing would have felt more natural. However, I am glad it's a trilogy. It just was a lot to pack into this one book. But regardless, I still really, really loved it. The series is definitely one of my new favorite series, I can gladly say, and I will be absolutely recommending the series to each and every single one of y'all that are watching this if you have not read it already. Honestly, I'm a little sad that it's over, but I'm also really curious to see what A Fragile Thread of Power is all about and which characters it follows and what's gonna go down that. Most of the characters' endings were like resolved, any like conflict, any like open questions, and most of those things were resolved. However, there are a few players, I feel like, that have a few open endings that could potentially lead to a new story. So very curious to see what will go on. But I'm so excited to eventually pick up Fragile Threads because it takes place in such a unique and wonderful world. And yeah, I'm just really curious to see what that follows. As for the other books that I read during Vampathon, I managed to read three other books and I'm going to briefly discuss them. First, we have Five Survive, which got a solid four stars. It was my very first thriller book and I still get stressed when I think back about this book. So no more thrillers for me. However, it was a fun YA fast paced book. The X-Hex, 2.75, not my favorite romance. It was a little bit too hard for me to suspend my disbelief about the foundation of the romance. And then the romance itself just wasn't executed as well as I would have hoped for. We started the readathon off pretty weak and I'm gonna blame this book for why I didn't get that much reading done. And then we have Hunting Prince Dracula, which got a 3.75. And I will be continuing on the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. So these are the four books that I managed to read during Vampathon. I mean, technically not all during Vampathon. We all know the timeline of this video was a bit questionable with my extra day added on, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I really hope that you enjoyed this vlog. I know it's kind of a long one. I had a lot of thoughts, a lot of me talking. So thank you so much for just hanging out with me and listening to me blather on about books. If you have any comments on any of the books that I've read or any books that you've been reading, please feel free to chat with me in the comments below. I do read and respond to every single comment and I love having conversations with y'all about books. Also, if you wanna subscribe, I feel like I never say that, but you should subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me and keep up. Uh, thank y'all so, so much for watching and I really do hope to see you in my next one. Toodles.